friends. Today I'm going to talk about a very big topic, another big one, and this is codependency. The reason why I'm talking about codependency is because it goes hand in hand with the topic of addiction, which I recently introduced. All right, well, I can say this personally, I have a lot of experience as a codependent. And because I have experience as a codependent, I know some things about addiction. This is what I think about codependence. Codependents and addicts go together like peanut butter and jelly, all right? For every addict, there is at least one codependent. And we know how prevalent addiction is, so you can just imagine all the codependents out there. And that's why we have programs like Codependence Anonymous and things like that. And, um, you know, I'm not an expert, but I am gonna give you a little bit of information that I hope at least, um, you know, introduces you to the topic and maybe you'll learn something new. But if you're interested, I would definitely do more searching on Google and YouTube and learn all you can about codependence. If you think you are codependent, or know someone who is, or if this topic interests you, just I would suggest doing a little bit more research into it. So today I've got my whiteboard and I've got some sketches from my son. I can't bear to erase them because they're so cute. But I'm going to give you guys a diagram. We're gonna get into chemistry a little bit, okay? I'm gonna draw for you guys a simple carbon atom. This is what a carbon atom looks like. It's got a cluster of protons and neutrons in the center, six protons, six neutrons. Can you see that all right? This is the nucleus. Then orbiting it, we have two electrons on one, one orbit. And then around that, it has an additional four electrons. Okay, I'm using the analogy of a carbon atom to help you visualize how I see codependence and addicts. In this model, the nucleus is the addict. Can you see that okay? And the electrons are the codependents in the addict's life. I'll just put CoD there. Same for that, okay? So for this particular addict, there are six codependents that are orbiting his or her self, okay? And why do I use this analogy? It's because the addict um, has fallen into this addiction and addictive behaviors that cause problems, okay? Cause personal problems, work problems, relationship problems, health problems, all kinds of problems. And these problems kind of generate mass and gravity and they draw in resources. They are problems that need to be fixed. And so here comes along all these codependents. They get pulled in to the drama and the problems of the addict. All right? If you have personal experience with this, I know you're starting to see what I'm talking about. Um, so if you have codependent tendencies, you have the tendency to want to help people and fix people and take on other people's responsibilities. So you gravitate towards the mass and drama that the addict's problems and behaviors create. All right, so that's a really great way to visualize the relationship between the addict and the codependent. And some would even say that codependence itself is an addiction. So we've got the addict who is uh, bound, you know, chemically in their brain to a substance, but then orbiting them is the codependent who now binds their life 
to the life of the addict. Now you find, if you're codependent, you find that um, you think about the addict's problems all the time and their problems become your problems. And you're kind of being pulled in whatever direction the addict is going. And you feel as if your life is not yours anymore. You've kind of devoted it to the addict. So examples of codependence could be a parent, a sibling, a child, a romantic partner, or best friend. These are all people that can get sucked into the codependent role with the addict. What do you do about be finding yourself codependent? Uh, it's tricky because it can happen before you even realize it. And many people feel like they're just being a good person. They just care. They just care so much, right? And oftentimes an addict not because they're bad people, but just because the addiction has taken that much control over them will end up stealing from these codependents, these loved ones, these support people, um, lying to them, taking advantage of them, uh, not out of like a, any malicious intent, but out of desperation to use, to get relief from the substance. So. They'll come by your house and you'll find something missing because they stole it and money, stole money or stole something, sold it for drug money. Okay, that's a good example. Or ask to borrow money again and again. Or they wrecked your car in a DUI, you know. So you're finding yourself picking up the pieces that the addict is leaving behind because they can't control their behavior. Um, and you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm always taken advantage of, I'm always getting hurt, I care too much, I love too deeply, why me, poor me, that kind of thing. Um, and so my first and biggest tip, if you find yourself codependent, like I have, is to set boundaries. Boundaries is the word of the day, okay? What are boundaries? Boundaries are lines that you draw where you say, I will not tolerate this. Say, this addict did this, I will not tolerate it. And then you, you have to enforce your boundaries. That can be tough. Um, for many codependents, the reason why you find yourself in a codependent role is because growing up you were in a home where boundaries didn't exist, or boundaries were regularly crossed, or boundaries were ill-defined, or boundaries were not respected. All right? So if you grew up where that was normal, it is very likely that you're gonna find yourself in relationships as an adult in the same role where it's natural and normal to be with somebody or be in a relationship with somebody who regularly crosses your boundaries, takes advantage of you, hurts you, and then you let it happen again and again. So boundaries. Um, beyond that, I would say go find a local Codependence Anonymous group Seek therapy for yourself. The addict isn't the only one that's going to need professional help in this situation that's become corrupt and, and all out of whack, okay? If you're codependent, there are some things that need to be healing, healed within yourself so that you don't end up becoming uh, taken advantage of again and again and it ends up hurting you and damaging yourself. So a uh, very brief, but I hope that this diagram helped illustrate the relationship between addicts and codependents, and I wish you lots of luck and health and healing. Last thought, okay, end note again. Um, this is gonna be, I'm just introducing the term enabling or enabler. For those of you who are brand new to the topic of codependency, um, enabling somebody is something that a lot of us get confused with helping. All right, excuse me. You want to definitely be able to recognize the difference between helping someone and enabling someone. Enabling someone is 
can look like helping, but actually in the long run, it ends up hurting. And I'll give you an example. Say that your friend has a shopping addiction and they run up all these cards, max out all these credit cards, and then guess what? They're broke, they have a crisis, they come to you and ask to borrow money. Now a good friend would go, sure, I can lend you money, right? Well, with the case of an addict, wrong. That lending of an addict, a, a shopaholic money is an enabling behavior because it enables them to perpetuate their addictive behavior. So you might think, yeah, I'm helping them. They're, they're in an emergency. It's a desperate situation. It's a crisis. I'm just doing what any good friend would do. But it doesn't help the addict solve their own problems. So the addict keeps creating problems with their addiction, but they don't know how to solve the problems. So please don't enable. That means don't do for the addict what they can do for themselves because that hinders their own personal growth. It's like treating them like a child and doing things for them, it doesn't allow them to grow. And sometimes that's what's called tough love, all right? That's when you have to put your foot down and force your boundaries and say no, and practice saying no, despite how many times they might try to emotionally manipulate you, telling you you're so mean, and they can't believe how could you, they needed you, blah, 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 right? You, you have to be the bad guy in situations like this. You have to, and it's actually for their own good to learn how to fix their own problems. It's a huge, huge step in addicts getting recovery and getting better is learning how to fix their own problems and take responsibility for their own problems and not always seek out other people to fix it for them and do stuff for them. So please uh, recognize when you're doing something that's enabling and then stop doing that thing as much as it goes against your nature to be helpful and to see yourself as good and not the bad guy. All right, thanks for watching.